always more cautious. But if he'd asked me to throw myself into the flames, I would have. You want to be of use, to be needed, to be loved. It was the end of July in the year 1610, Naples, two hours before sunset. It had been a three-day journey, and there were delays at the port. You're... I'm a painter. From Sicily? Yes. Not in your Naples on business? To work? No, to see a friend. A painter. Michele Caravaggio. Your viceroy is one of his patrons. Hmm. I barely knew Naples. Fortifications. Sullen. Massive. The shape of the place came back. What I'd forgotten was the noise. Tall buildings, five, six stories. The streets dark and crowded. High, stained, streaked houses. Carriages, covered litters, beggars, paupers. The address I had was that of his agent in Naples. The Piazza Carita, the artist's quarter. I'm looking for Abraham Vink. The servant girl was Flemish. Uh, a vase, sir. Till when? Uh, um, w when will he be back? Tomorrow. Oh, or oh, 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 Michele Carvaggio. It's him I'm looking for. I'm Mario Maniti. I'm an old friend of his. No. Uh, he's not here, sir. Uh, gone. Gone where? Rome. Rome? Yes, they moved his pictures. They moved his pictures? Yeah. Where? It was an area of narrow alleys, and now dusk, no moon. I was smartly dressed, too smart. I needed somewhere to stay. Uh, 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 do you know uh, where the Church of Santa Maria is? Uh, the Black Friars. He'd been working there, the Dominicans, the Black Friars. The Church of Santa Maria della Sanita. A cloister, living quarters, a hospital and kitchen. Ser Piero was the man to see. No, we've had no word. A very grave and solid person. And disappointed. He left, oh, t near two weeks ago. To go to Rome? That's what we heard, yes. Though said nothing to us. I it was abrupt. Yes? You've come from Sicily to see him. I, I'm sorry I can't help you. I'm a friend of his. We were associates in Rome when we were younger, worked together. Lately, he came to stay with me in Sicily. I have a studio there. An artist's studio? Yes, he'd been in Malta last year, disliked it and came to me. Then on to here. He told me something of his recent difficulties in Malta. He was disputatious. Yes. And some years ago, he killed a man in Rome... Yes. No, I, th I think his adversary was as much to blame. A duel. We talked of that also. People kill one another over trifles. Yes. He's been on the run, in a sense, ever since what happened in Rome. Some people thought him mad. I didn't. He is a great painter... And penitent. We wouldn't have employed him otherwise. We commissioned him to paint an altarpiece. Has he finished it? No, but has begun. He wanted to live with us for a time. He felt unsafe. He was troubled. We offered him board and lodging. It would have been part of his fee. There was freedom, of course, for him to work elsewhere in Naples. Our commission needed to be finished by the turn of the year. That was the only stipulation. He was working for the Viceroy. And for the Marchesa di Colonna. She's here in Naples? Yes. Did he have a studio? He had shut it. He feared for his safety. He had been attacked here in Naples, knifed, disfigured, a deliberate attack. I'd heard that. The scar was up the side of his face, from his chin to forehead. A revenge attack? Mm, several assailants, he didn't know who, so he said... Did they want to kill him or maim him? <laughs> Does that... You said deliberate. It would perhaps explain who did the deed. 
He had a number of enemies. No, I can't. The attack was some months ago. Yes. It wasn't till he wrote that I, I knew the extent of it. When did he come to you? Three weeks ago. Hmm. It was about the, the time his letter would be sent, though there was no date. What did he say? That his enemies were all about him. I hardly knew what to make of the letter. He said he, said he was a rag of a man. <sighs> he sounded distressed, lonely. So you came. I, I could do nothing immediately. I knew he wasn't quite alone, that he had some friends here in Naples. What happened to his dog? His dog? He had a dog in Sicily, a big black thing. I don't know. There was an assistant came here from time to time, brought his material. An assistant? Francesco, I think. Checker? That's what he called him. Do you know where he's living? No. Checker? Do you know him? No, but I'm, I'm assuming it's the person who arrived after my time in Rome. In many ways, uh, he was my replacement. You assisted Michele? He was older than me, but uh, had, had taken some time to find his feet. We were associates. Ah. I modelled for him, and I copied some of his paintings. I wasn't his apprentice, but I learned. I didn't know Checo was here in Naples. A young man? Yes. Not with him all the time? No, not here. Hmm. You've had a long journey. Yes. On behalf of a friend, do you have somewhere to stay? No. You would be welcome to stay here. I will show you the painting tomorrow, if you wish, what there is of it. Yes, I liked talking to him. I'm sorry you've missed him. Did his pardon come through from Rome? He was waiting for a pardon. I knew he was hoping for a pardon. People were working on his behalf, influential people, but I don't know. Uh, there are people in Rome who wish him dead. Friends of the man he killed. I think the greater danger is there. I tell them that. Well, he left some things here. From what you say, it's possible he will return. <laughs> Though not tonight, perhaps. You could have his room, if you wish. Yes. Thank you. It's not locked. A chest. Some things for his own use. Clothes. Costly, but worn to rags. Black and torn. Working clothes. He had another chest. A leather chest. Yes, I remember. His book box. I saw it, but no, he must have taken it. Books and working materials. Even in Rome, all his possessions were scattered. <laughs> he left things with me for a time. But was disciplined with work. It was the only thing that was important to him. He's well read, very intelligent. That surprises you. His reputation was that of a man with... Oh. With a crazy brain. <laughs> yes. He is restless, not, not calm. You've looked after him. In Sicily. And from the start of our friendship. He's always needed someone to do that. And then he came here. Like a dog licking his wounds. Hmm. Shall I leave the shutters closed? Yes, thank you. You like to work early? Yes. I was never as good as him at getting up. Wherever he'd been the night before. <laughs> what follows I cannot account for. When I woke, still dark, it was as if there was a presence in the room. A powerful presence, but no discernible shape or shadow. Who are you? What do you want? Tell me what you want. What is necessary to be remembered is that from the first moments of this experience, which lasted a few minutes, I associated this visitation with him, and that there was no fear. A 
And when eight days were accomplished for the circumcising of the child, his name was called Jesus, which was so named of the angel before he was conceived in the womb. It's here, the side chapel. It would be moved into the main body of the church, finally. A ladder and a couple of boxes to stand on. The way he painted, things, figures, seem to emerge. Dark ground and a cluster of shapes. One figure at the top, more or less complete. An old man, hands raised. Simeon? Yes. The virgin at the centre was a pink base, no more than the rough shape, with an oval of pale ground waiting for the Christ child. Another figure, a few rapid brush strokes, browns and greys, was leaning in. An eye, half a face in profile, near centre of the canvas. Who's the one? The, the eye leaning into the child. The high priest? He inclined to his being a rabbi, as Moyo, with scalpel or knife. The executioner, he called him. What he understood was the theology of the picture. The first of the wounds our Lord suffered. There would be blood under the knife. We agreed that it would be explicit. <laughs> he would enjoy that. The nativity with a knife, he called it. Was he using models? No, he said he would if he felt he needed to. He left that to him. He didn't use No straws. models? No. Is that... Perhaps he intended to when he felt more safe. He would, he would work out the idea of a composition and then find figures to pose, bring in what clothes and props and so on, and attack the canvas starting at the back. You worked with him? Mm, when we were younger. And last year, when he came to stay in Sicily. It was a Lazarus. I got him the commission, and for a couple of days, old time's sake, he let me work on it with him. In what way? Some of the drapery. A blue cloak. Christ's blue cloak. At the same time as he was working? We'd worked together before, huh? but a long time ago. It was, it was a big picture. There are always routine areas. It was those. He was painting a Lazarus here. Another one? For the Marchesa. Uh, he liked to have several paintings on the go. Hmm. Well, maybe he will come back. Do you think so? There are important churches in Rome. More prominent than us and a better display for his paintings. Rich patrons. Oh, he could treat the rich sometimes as if they were his enemies. Had he fallen out with the Marchesa? Well, you spoke of her warmly. But chose not to live there. She would offer him shelter. He chose to live with you. Yes, I thought it was because of the requirements of the painting, but there was perhaps a wish to find a different way of life. How was he paid for the painting? In instalments... He had had the first, the second on completion, and a third for after any alterations we might require. We needed our painting for the Feast of the Circumcision, January. Not immediately. No. Will you follow him to Rome? You'll know Rome. I came because I thought he was lost here, incapable. You are welcome to stay with us while you remain in Naples. You have commitments in... Syracuse. We're busy, but I have a, a very able assistant. How many do you employ? Twelve. Twelve? Oh, they're a mixed bunch, but like the disciples. <laughs> it's enough. What other paintings of his should I see while I'm here in Naples? Do you know? There's a resurrection at the Lombard Church. That's very... <laughs> It was the morning of July 28th. There were so many people in Naples, so tightly packed, it was hard to get around. The dealer, Vink, was alone, seated facing me as I entered from the square. He seemed absent, as if his soul had left his body, his face pale as ashes. Abraham, it's Mario Maniti. And though we'd known one another well in Rome, he looked at me as if he'd seen a ghost. Abraham, it's Mario. What are you doing here? I'm visiting Naples. I'd come to see Michele, but he's gone. But you've not heard? The events of the previous night being so out of the ordinary that when he told me, it was as if I already knew. He stayed. He died on the way to Rome. When? He may have been dead for ten days. Where? 
somewhere along the coast, near Rome. How? They don't know. How do you know? A message sent back down the coast by one of the boatmen. A, a rumour, is it true? I've only just heard. It's not certain. A servant. A servant? A message sent to who? One of the Marchese's men brought me the message. It's where Michele set off from the Palazzo Celemare. It's a boatman we know. He's the one who sent word. I don't know why he should lie. You know him? Alessandro, yes. Died how? Killed? Or... That's all I've heard. Nobody knows. But God forbid it isn't true. And here you are. And I've not seen you since Rome. Oh, was it you who was asking for me last night? Yes. But you're looking prosperous. People say that. You should have stayed with you in Sicily. He was attacked here. Who attacked him? He didn't know. But they did a good job on him. Yes. The intention was to scar him and not kill him. He thought it was whoever he'd crossed in Malta, some nobleman. Do you know? Only that whoever it was was injured and not killed. But seriously wounded. He would only tell me so much. That he escaped imprisonment, but was scared that that someone from Malta would find him. He came on to you from Malta? Yes. For a time, he was frightened. Well, whoever caught up with him here didn't want to kill him, just scar him for life. You couldn't always tell what fears were real and what imaginary. And did he behave himself in Sicily? Where are you? Are you in Syracuse? Yes. He couldn't settle, though, which, which was as well, probably, for both of us. He said you were married? Yes. What did your wife make of him? It was beyond her comprehension that somebody could live like that. Hmm. You have children? Two, who died. Oh. He was like some... strange bird landing, rare bird. And we couldn't keep him, though he was paid well enough. <sighs> Had his pardon come through? Yes. Well, the promise of it. It was being fixed. Who? Scipio Borghese. The Pope's nephew. If it's true that he's dead, I'll tell you what's going to happen now. There's going to be a scramble for what is left. The Macasis man asked what I've got. The spoils, hmm? It's Borghese. The original of this was meant for. Now, this is a copy. Vincent's made it. This is David and the head of Goliath. You see who is painted? As Goliath? I do. He'd painted himself. A severed head. Half dead, half alive. You can't tell. And you recognize the David? No. That's Checo. The boy in the painting, David. Checo. Was handsome. Seventeen or so. The painter's severed head, Goliath, grotesque. That David is full of pity for the man he's killed. Pity and sorrow. They don't look like strangers. These two know one another well. Where is Checo? He'd been living with Checo. Yes, they had been. But the boy walked out on him. When? Lately, this last month? Yes. They were fighting a lot. Jekyll was living, moved in with some Spaniard. Plenty of money. Some Spanish swaggerer. Does he know, Checo, about what's happened? If he does, until now, soon enough. Is that all you've got left? Yes. The rest went with him. Gifts. When's the boatman, Alessandro? Caramano. When is he back? Soon, we hope. Where, the port? Palazzo Celemare. The dog's there. It's the end of the Via Chiaia. I thought I saw him last night. Who? Michele. No. 
We were almost never apart for more than two years. Well, you were very smart, old. Yes. I had only to see him and my eyes were blind to all else. My senses swam. He painted that look. Painted you. Possessed you. My too young heart. And when I'd finished sitting for him, even then he would watch me. And you thought, is that him as painter? The clever worker? Just a habit observing me. What he saw in me that would help him make a picture. Does he just want to get the painting right? Love? Or work? The Palazzo Celemari was next to the bay. Cedar trees, thick walls, barred windows. I'm a friend of and a Caravaggio guard. No, nobody. She's seeing nobody today. Two guards. Was he one? I'm a friend of Caravaggio the painter. No. Away, clear off. I would like to leave my name. She's seeing nobody. Then I would like to leave my name. Through the gate there were terraces down to the sea. Orange trees, figs, vines, fountains. And those cedars, almost black against the sun. He'd been living with Checo, his assistant. There had been some kind of row, and then he came on to you. You see, he must have chosen not to stay with the Marchesa. And you were turned away. It was as if the mention of his name was unwelcome, which I don't understand. But he was still working for her, he told me. She was his protector when he was a boy. His father was her steward, a position of trust and influence. He was also her architect. His father died and she took the boy in. He followed her to Rome. The family also had an estate here in Naples. He, he kept close to her family, if in tribulation. There are guards, the same ones who kept me away. I'm wondering if the people who attacked him followed him on the boat. There would be other passengers? You think he might have been killed by the people who maimed him? I don't know. You said, you said he thought the attack here was deliberate. Where was the attack? Was that in the street where? Um, it, it was someplace uh, outside. Place? It's called the Osteria del Cerilio. It's a place where men meet. It's well known. Where they say even priests feast. More than an eating house? Yes. Some say that painters are all like that, licentious, ungodly, base. But I think to be a painter, a good painter, and survive, you need discipline. You, you'll stay here till you hear more news. Yes. Thank you. He told me all his sins were mortal. Did he confess? Not to me, but to another. What he said to me was that the utterance of his sins was liberating for him, but it didn't set him free. We talked freely about salvation, forgiveness. There was a longing to return to Christ. I've talked to... Uh, well, it, it depends entirely on your other work and commitments, but we would like you to consider... There may not be enough to work on, but you are familiar with his working methods. Finishing the altarpiece he had begun. Do you think he will come back? No. Then you would consider our offer? Yes. I knew his secrets. Learned how to use mirrors to project images onto a wall. Studying the details, the colours, fruit and flowers, leaves, a carafe of water, feathers, limbs, faces, flesh, armour. Those who entertained a secret envy of him, jealous artists and others of ill opinion, called him a necromancer. But what he did was learning, skill, hard work, hand and eye. You can't rely on glasses, mirrors, to paint longing, pain, love, desire. No news. We were waiting for the boatman. But there's rumours all around the city. Check on us. You've seen him? There's a told him about you. He knows you're here. Did you tell him where I was staying? Yes, but he was... 
afflicted. He'd already heard some of the rumours. What? That it was a conspiracy to get his pictures. An ambush. His body thrown into the sea. A deliberate attack. It's all blown up. A plot, the Pope, the Cardinals, they're all involved. They're not going to kill the Golden Goose. Could his killers have accompanied him on the boat? But you think that's what happened? He was on his own, unprotected. We don't know. It's wait for the boatman to return. How would I find Checo? Now? I want to meet him. He'll be at the Osteria. Evenings, that's where he spends his time. The Cirilia? Yes. Where is it? The Via San Felice. Well, there's a back entrance behind Santa Maria La Nova. If you don't want people to know you're visiting. The Osteria was in an alley off a courtyard. A discreet door, almost concealed. A corridor brought you onto the upper floor, a balcony dimly lit, the windows cross-barred, oil-papered. Downstairs, even early evening, there were torches lit. Looking down, I saw him. Checo, straight away, leaning over a table, his head thrown back. After a moment, he got up. What do you want, then? It took a moment. Then the recognition that it wasn't him. I'm sorry, I thought you were somebody else. Well, don't let that put you off. No, no, I'm sorry. Nothing to be sorry about. What are you looking for? I'm looking for Francesco Benari. Checo? Checo? No, I've not seen him tonight. What I do? That's not what I'm looking for. <laughs> well, you've come to the wrong place, then. The circumcision. It was hard to see him making much of the subject, a nativity with a knife. The knife, glinting, would be at the dead centre of the canvas, the focus. A weak old Christ child, unsuspecting of the pain, and blood under the knife. A sort of small-scale execution. And the executioner, the rabbi, that eye, half a face... I'm sorry if you were considering the painting. No, 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 don't worry. There was a message for you. The Marchesa wants to see me. Tomorrow. Is sorry I was turned away. Do you know her? Uh, I think she has a picture of me somewhere in one of her houses. Probably Rome. I'm dressed in white muslin. Young enough not to know better. <laughs> I barely knew my own face till he painted me. He couldn't afford a model, so I became his model. When we were young in Rome, we were sometimes hungry, past shops selling fruit, pastry shops, bakers, and tried not to breathe the smell. Once he painted me holding a basket of fruit. After he'd painted the fruit, we ate it. It was one of the paintings that made his name. But he couldn't get my neck right. Later, at the height of his skill and accomplishment, he could show agony in the angle of a neck. Sorrow in the folds of a skirt. You were with him in Rome. Yes, I remember you. You were his model. It was from her. You have done well. At the Palazzo Celamare, with its view of the bay, its fountains and orange groves. You went back to Sicily. In that magical place. Yes. That I heard the news, finally of the way he met his end. He could settle in no place. No. It wasn't a killing. His boat had put in not far from Rome, a little port where he would disembark. But he had been arrested at the port. His papers were not in order, perhaps, or he was mistaken for someone else. He had created an uproar, was imprisoned, and the boatman, who had other passengers and with other commissions... What could he do? Sailed on, taking return. the paintings with him. And then Michele is released. We don't know why or how. And goes after the boat. Chasing it. Trying to catch up with it. It was a marshy area. Unhealthy. He wasn't well when he set off. But it was hot. His heat. No shade. He was struck down with a fever. 
died. Not killed? No. Did someone take him in, look after him? Yes, there were some brothers, a confraternity. They looked after him and buried him. The fever was quite short. Do we know the place? Porto Ercole. It's further along the coast from Rome. Chasing the boat, his paintings, like a mad dog after a stick. Have the paintings been returned? Oh, yes. They were safe. He needn't have been concerned. They would have accepted him back in Rome without his paintings. And already people want to know what's left. That's why you were turned away. Guard thought you were someone else who had come to stake his claim. People arriving here, here, as if they were bailiffs and I a bankrupt. People want his paintings. Even more now, he's dead. I am sorry it is me has to bring you the news. <coughs> you took him in in Sicily? Yes. He was a person of such strange manners and way of life. Such temper. <laughs> I gave him free reign to paint whatever he wished. Here. To live here after the attack. I had accommodation always kept for him. He knew that. But he stayed only till his wound had healed. He couldn't settle. He didn't need to live like that. Uh, I think he did. Well, we took him in when needed. It belonged to no one. No. He loved the boy, Francesco. Checo. Oh, do you know him? He's here in Naples. I would like to. Well, there is a will drawn up here after his attack. He left various of his painting materials, his books and possessions to the boy. There is 500 scudi, so he says, but there may be creditors and the matter of who now owns the disputed paintings. What does Vink have, do you know? I think only a copy. Well, if the boy is directed here, he will have the services of a lawyer. He would know what was meant for who. People are not always reliable in these matters, and his estate will be begged and plundered by others. He was painting Lazarus for you. Mm. He was dissatisfied with it. Lately, he'd found it difficult to concentrate for long periods. He feared his powers were fading. His spirit was disturbed, and so he slashed the canvas. Before he got attacked, he was sleeping in his clothes. Dagger by his side. His model, who lay with him. I think you could feel something coming. He'd been with you in Sicily. Came here and sent for me from Rome. I'd not seen him for two years. He was drinking, eating next to nothing. Bits of bread, scraps of food, eating off old canvases. He kept his boots on in bed. After he'd been attacked, I helped take them off. And his skin came off with them. Who attacked him? Three men. Two who held him down, the other slashed his face. He thought it was Malta, a fight with whoever he'd upset. People in high places there, a revenge for that. I thought he was more in danger from the family in Rome of the man he killed. They didn't come to kill him, you see. They could have, but they just wanted to damage him. What happened to his... Half his face destroyed. He said he would rather have a hundred wounds in his body than one in the face. He wanted to look away. There were people here. Jealous painters. It could have been anybody. You attended to him? For a time. But he was unlivable with. You live with him, you lead his life. And so he came here. The Dominicans. You left him? He didn't like it. He threw a stool at me. When did you leave him? A month ago. We packed up the studio and he came here. They'd asked him to do the painting. I don't think he was capable of doing a big painting. I think his heart was in it. A circumcision. Mm, he'd got plans for it. He wasn't working for models? Nope. From his mind's eye. <sighs> Memory. His hands were shaking. Yeah, look, what do you notice about the eye? The rabbi, the one who's doing the circumcision, the uh, executioner. 
He called in. It looks as if he's started with the eye and is working outwards. Yeah, look at it closely. Huh? It's sightless. Huh. His left eye. After the attack, it wasn't just a surface wound. Something had happened to the eye, damaged it. Blind? No, not completely, but that's what he feared. He couldn't see properly out of it. Things were distorted like a glass, convex. He couldn't paint at night. He couldn't paint with the shutters closed. He couldn't see much on that side, and what he saw wasn't right. And he didn't want people to know. He used to say his eyes were good, because when he was young, he used to read by moonlight. He held the book up against the wall so that the light fell on it. He always thought he could paint his way out of trouble. David and Goliath, when did he paint that? It's not new. Long before the attack. All he was painting, finally, apart from this, were pictures to help set him free. The ones he took with him. Gifts for Scipio Borghese. Payment for helping set him free. Where's the original David and Goliath? Vink's got it. And that's a copy? <laughs> that's the original. That's not what he said to me. There is no copy, not yet. Why would he say that to me? He's scared it'll get taken. It belongs to Scipio Borghese. He was getting the pardon for him. But he didn't take it with him on the boat. Why? It's magnificent. Oh, because it's too obviously me and him. It's like a portrait. Scipio Borghese, he's nephew of the Pope. He couldn't accept something like that and be seen working on Michele's behalf. At least not for a time. What will happen to it? Oh, we're going to make a couple of copies and then I'll take it to Rome. Oh. That was the original idea. You would have gone with him to Rome. He told me he'd left me everything in his will. I thought it was just to keep hold of me. And then you come looking for me to tell me that it's true. I would have worked with him again in Rome. But not lived with him. That was the arrangement. He didn't like it, but you had to be hard with him. He never taught me, not really. I asked him to. He wouldn't. He didn't know how to teach. I wanted more instruction, but it was just fetching and carrying, grinding his colours. He could have got an errand boy for that. He stayed with you last year in Syracuse. Yes. You run a workshop? Yes. He said you don't do much painting yourself. It depends who it's for. You do the outline. You finish things off. He didn't like that. Nor me, but that's what I do. And he would copy his own pictures if it suited him, or get others to. <sighs> they want me to finish this off. He said he thought you were weary. Weary? Of painting. Not happy. I'm settled. And I'm alive. I thought I'd got away from him and I hadn't. Not when he stayed with you in Sicily. You see yourself through his eyes. Your calm and peaceful life. I thought I'd never see him again, and as soon as I did, I wanted what we had. And hated what I had. I, sh I should be happy with my condition. I'm, I'm not... He used you. He used me. He used to say he wanted me, he needed me, he didn't. He wanted someone young, like me. You. Don't change, he once said to me. What kind of a thing is that to say to somebody? I had to get away from him. I can go days where I can talk and think of nothing but him. If I live to be a thousand, I will always remember that time with him. But I think if I'd remained with him any longer, it would have killed me. No, he couldn't love you. No. He couldn't love anybody. I think he came to me two nights ago. What do you mean? A dream? It was before I knew he was dead. <laughs> Perhaps it was a dream. A waking dream. I'm not going to finish the painting. I don't think it would have been much good. His idea of colour lately was a bit of red. Is that the way you paint? No. I give people what they want, a lot of colour. <laughs> <laughs>
What happened to his dog? The black thing? Corvo? Corvo, yes. It ran off, more or less, as soon as it got here. It joined all the others. And on the third day there was a violent earthquake. And the Lord came down from heaven and, going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning. His clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. Just before I left Naples, I walked down to see his resurrection at the Lombard church, the third chapel on the right-hand side. A shaft of light crossing the canvas, the guards, one still sleepy, the flash of light falling on the armour he had loved to paint. The other, awake, but staring, uncomprehending, at this white-clothed figure, the living God, not even seen rising into the air and simply strolling past his guards. What happens to the world when a miracle takes place? How might it be possible to tell, should the risen Christ come among us? He painted those moments. Those who see and those who do not. What I remember is how, when we were miserably paid in Rome, that new world, he painted me as I was, hands red, fingers dirty. How once he made me cry and painted that. And how I envied him his talent. My intention has been to mention my particular actions at that time and my feelings. Does not one wish to learn from the person one loves whether one is loved in return? I left his unfinished painting to another hand and returned to Syracuse. A busy practice. A good wife. The tranquil life. In Waiting for the Boatman, Mario Minitti was played by David Tennant. Piero by Anton Lesser. Checo, Joe Dempsey. Fink, Peter Hamilton Dyer. The Marchesa, Tracy Wiles, and The Youth by Harry Livingston. Waiting for the Boatman was written by Stephen Wakelam. The director was Sasha Yevtushenko. <laughs>